Allegations of election interference continue to dominate the House of Commons, as you just heard there. The back and forth centers around Tory MP Michael Chong. The Globe and Mail reports, citing CSIS intelligence from 2021, that Chong and his family were targeted by China's intelligence service and that a Chinese diplomat working in Canada was involved. The opposition wants that dip diplomat rather expelled, and Chong himself told Power Play yesterday the feds never informed him about the threats made against his family. Let's bring in MPs to talk about that now. With me this evening, Foreign Affairs Parliamentary Secretary Rob Oliphant, Conservative House Leader Andrew Scheer, and NDP Foreign Affairs Critic Heather McPherson. Hi, everybody. Thanks very much for making the time for this discussion tonight. Mr. Oliphant, I'll, I'll start with you, and I'll ask you kind of bluntly to, to lay the groundwork here. Was your government aware of the intelligence that the Globe and Mail is reporting on? Did you know Michael Chong and his family were being targeted? So I can simply say I didn't know. When I read the Globe and Mail, that was the first time that I knew about it. But it's not the first time I've known about the insidious nature of foreign interference. It is something that I think is um, it should be worrisome to all of us um, in the House. It is something that we are absolutely concerned about and taking steps on every day. The um, uh, the hostility that we have felt from China over the last number of years is real. Uh, we knew that when we had Canadians arbitrarily detained, um, and we have been continually looking at China's action. This is something that I think we should be worried about, and I think we are worried about it. And so, uh, when I read that article, the first my first instinct was to call Michael Chong personally right away. And you did. And I did. And I've spoken to him several times in the last two days to simply say that uh, no Canadian let alone a member of the House of Commons, should ever face intimidation, should ever face targeting by a foreign power, should ever face anything that veers on a threat. And uh, we will do everything we can do to ensure that doesn't happen to him, that his family and relatives okay. are safe, and that all members of Parliament should be able to do their job. So I can appreciate all that and the fact that, and thank you for being straight about what you knew. Did your government know? Did the Prime Minister know? I have not been told uh, in anything. I'm not in that, uh, that area. I mean, I'm not a member of Canada. Cabinet. What I do know is that uh, the Prime Minister, the Minister of uh, Public Safety, are, are, are briefed regularly on, uh, on issues that I'm not briefed on. Uh, but I also know that uh, what you read in the Globe and Mail may not be the same as what is in a briefing on public uh, national security issues. So Why I can't don't... the Prime Minister say that? My question, like, I, I take your point that you're not privy to everything. But shouldn't, maybe the Prime Minister isn't telling you, shouldn't the Prime Minister be telling Canadians, hey, I didn't know that Michael Chong was being targeted. I didn't get that information. If he can't say that in the absence of being able to directly tell Canadians that, isn't it understandable they'd infer the I, opposite? I think that the, the issues with public safety and national security are always something that are, are somewhat kept uh, apart from, from the broad public conversation. Uh, that is an issue of, of public safety and national security. And so we entrust um, our executive branch with those, uh, those issues. And what I have heard from the Minister of Public Safety what I've heard from the Prime Minister is their direct concern for any MP who may be targeted and the actions that we need to take. And so whether it's the issue of a, of a diplomat, if they're acting outside the Vienna Convention, they should absolutely be uh, be expelled from this country. That's what we know. So you're prepared, uh, your government is prepared to do that? Should that be the case? If that's the case, this government will never allow a, a foreign diplomat to operate outside the Vienna Convention. If they're doing anything that is beyond that, they should not be in this country. Um, and that, that is what we will do. Uh, Mr. Scheer, is it not possible, given the fact that the Prime Minister has announced that there will be an investigation, that there will be a probe into these allegations, that the government was not aware of what the intelligence reported on the Globe and Mail is? Well, we have to take uh, Liberals uh, at, at their word when they tell people that the Prime Minister sees everything and reads everything. That was the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff who told the Parliamentary Committee that that's the case, that he sees these briefings and that he reads them. The Minister of Public Safety also issued a directive to CSIS instructing CSIS to elevate any of these types of report to the ministerial level, level where the minister would have seen these reports. The, the issue here is that we've had a lot of lip service, we've had a lot of platitudes about taking Chinese interference seriously, but the government hasn't acted. There has been this report, there's been this information in the hands of the government for almost two years based on a vote in the House of Commons and that agent of the regime in Beijing is still in Canada because Justin Trudeau's government is allowing him to. He's got credentials from the government to stay in Canada, despite the fact that they know that there are reports that he is actively engaging in this but type you, of interference. That is you unacceptable. Them, right? You characterize them as what they are, reports. It's intelligence that was shared with the Globe and Mail. Do you know for a fact that that intelligence 
is evidence, that it's proof of that? And do you know that that intelligence was shared with the Prime Minister? Is it not possible that that specific report was not? Well, again, I go back to the fact that we've got Justin Trudeau's chief of staff saying he sees everything, he reads everything. They've had two days now in the House of Commons. They're not answering these questions. Uh, Canadians don't trust a Prime Minister who just will refuse to answer a question as to what he knew and when he knew it. Uh, the other thing I would point out is that the Vienna Convention gives the host country the right to expel uh, an official, a diplomat, for any reason. So, based on these you heard reports, your colleague, though, if, if, it ha if it's true, he will be expelled. Th this individual has been named in a report citing uh, specific, uh, uh, a specific case of harassment, a, a, a specific harassment uh, of a member of Parliament's family because of a vote in the House of Commons. We gave the Prime Minister, we gave the Minister multiple chances today to tell Canadians when he knew. He refused to answer. So for two years, this has been going on. Th th these reports have existed. Uh, they can't answer simple questions. This all goes back to the larger point about this is why we need an independent inquiry into foreign interference by the regime in Beijing. This is why we can't have a friend well, of the prime minister. We can't have a member of the Trudeau Foundation head up this 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 rapporteur position to mm -hmm. come up with a recommendation. We need a public inquiry so we can get to the bottom. Let me bring of in your colleague, Ms. McPherson, on that issue because uh, you know it, it is within the realm of possibility that a lot of this could already have been exposed or discussed should a public inquiry have already been mm -hmm. called. Your party provides some political cover for the Liberals to be able to delay that process mm -hmm. by employing the use of uh, the former Governor General and, and laying out this process. You said that was okay. Do you regret that now? Well, so first of all, I want to express my sympathy and my solidarity with Michael Chong. I think that what has happened to him has been, has been horrendous. And I, I also want to extend that to the Chinese-Canadian community because because while this is, this is a horrendous thing that's happened to Mr. Chong, this is something that has been happening in this country for decades. The Chinese-Canadian community has been telling us that this interference with their lives has been happening for decades. People have been afraid for their loved ones for a very long time, and nothing has been done. So I think all parliamentarians need to come together and figure out how to actually act on this now, because I agree, nothing that the government has done to date has been enough. Now, now so our leader has definitely called. So why did you offer political called. cover to delay the employment well, we of the public we inquiry? We actually demand that the government bring this forward. The government, we've been asking for the government to bring forward a truly independent public inquiry from the very beginning. While you know, at the, the same the, time saying the process they laid out is a good one. Well, we better see a public inquiry. Like, this is this this has damaged our democracy. This has damaged Canada's democracy and the trust that Canadians have in our democracy. And so until we have that public inquiry, how do we how do we ask Canadians to rebuild that trust? And, and that is so dangerous. That's what I think maybe that the Liberals don't understand, is just how damaging this is to our democracy and, and the, the faith that Canadians have in our democracy. There is nothing that will restore that like an independent, fully public there, inquiry. There and, are, and, and it I has mean, to be There done. are, it to be to fair be to the government, there are bodies that were set up in order to determine that exact question, right? To, to, to examine the, the idea of whether or not our democracy was in peril or was But I think we've gone too far. Like yeah, yeah, but they, they looked now. at those two elections, right? And, and I'm not saying it absolves, you know, certain writings or we shouldn't be looking very closely, but they determined that the, the integrity of those elections was not compromised. Do you say you don't believe that? Well, no, it's not that. It's that the Canadians now see that there are parliamentarians within our House of Commons that are being threatened. Like, that's a risk, right? Like, that's something that we all should be... We, and we don't even know. You know, I have Chinese-Canadian members of my caucus. And, and the only reason we know that Mr. Chong was targeted was because of the Globe and Mail article. So we don't even know if, if other members of Parliament... I don't know if I've been targeted. You know, we don't have that information. And Mr. Oliphant does Ms. McPherson have a point, though, in, 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 in so far as other people could have been targeted. And, and I think it's important to get across to viewers, like, it's for the very uh, act of supporting a motion that was uh, characterizing what's happening against Uyghurs in China as genocide. Yeah, that's, that's, a, the, that's what sure. prompted, according to that intelligence, according to what's reported by the Global Mail, that's what prompted the targeting of Michael Trump. That's a big deal. It's a motion I voted for as well. Um, it, 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 uh, it, it's one that I voted for. And you know, I think what we need to do is we dial back the rhetoric on this and, and uh, say, listen, Opposition always has good ideas that we want to work with. Let's let's find the the right venues to to uh, tap into uh, the differences of opinion and to find the uh, the way ahead. I think that is a very appropriate thing to do. But we also have to look at there is absolute evidence that China has attempted to interfere. We see that. Um, we also have evidence that they were not successful. 
That is one of those things that we have seen. We have set up a, a, a national security committee of parliamentarians. We have set up a, a senior officials uh, body to look at whether or not there's been uh, successful interference. And yet something like this comes as a shock to everyone who hears uh, it. And, 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 and for, for us, for, for me, as I read the Globe and Mail article, I wanted to know more. I want to know uh, like what does it mean to be knew. targeted? What does have it mean to... Uh, have, you asked, have you asked Justin Trudeau if he knows? Uh, I am uh, very much in, in, in a sense of trust that this government is taking this issue extremely seriously, that if any Canadian, and, and I, I, I want to echo what Heather said about uh, Canadians of Chinese background, should never be targeted as no Canadian should be targeted. Members of Parliament should be free to do their work. I voted for that motion, um, and uh, I, I guess, maybe yeah. I'm targeted, I don't know, but the reality is they are not having effect. And what I, could have effect right, is yeah. divide us. What I'm we need right now story. is I, to protect uh, democracy. And I think we should all be in do that. I think that we share that, that concern. A really quick final word to each of you, yeah. If a Canadian citizen harassed the family of a member of parliament over a vote in the House of Commons, that Canadian citizen would be charged and if found guilty, put in jail. If there was we evidence. Ha but we have, we have evidence. We have multiple reports about Chinese interference, the, the Beijing regime doing this. The government hasn't expelled a single agent from the Beijing regime. They haven't shut down the police stations that the government of China is operating across the country. They haven't come forward with a registry of foreign agents like our allies have but done. They have so they to pay do a so. lot of lip service. They talk in these platitudes about like working with the opposition and Canadians even have trust. They've sat on this information for years and have allowed it to continue. This agent in the consul office in Toronto continues to operate in Canada because he has permission to be here from the Trudeau government. Do you, do you, uh, Ms. McPherson, last word too. Do you really really think the Prime Minister, though, would know about something like this and not do anything about it? Because, I mean, that's basically the inference that, that, that you and your colleague are making. Listen, the, the way we get to the bottom of this is an independent public inquiry. We work together, all parties. This is bigger than any one party. This has to be solved so the Canadians have threats in our democracy. Well, a few weeks from now, May 23rd, apparently, we, we might find out if that's happening. I'm going to leave the discussion there. Thank you, all three of you, for your time tonight. Rob Oliphant, Andrew Shear, and Heather McPherson.